Hello everyone, it is Sukasa from Sucraft and Su Games at Twitch. I am back and in this first episode of my tutorial walkthrough for the 4X Space RTS called Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion, I am going to show you exactly what you need to know to hit the ground running and get off to a good start towards your goal of galactic domination. <laughs> Uh, which has always been a fantasy of mine, but uh, yeah, I don't hide my ambition. I, w I want to be emperor of the galaxy. It's not gonna happen anytime soon, though. Seeing as how the species, which is the dominant one on my planet, happens to be a mealy, infantile, childlike race with you know, absolutely no advanced technology, but nonetheless, I c a man can dream. A man can dream. <laughs> so let's get started here. Um, I've set up a game. And I've customized it a bit. Um, for tutorial purposes, I went into the game options and set it to normal start instead of quick start. Um, by default, it sets the quick start, but I'm doing it on normal just to show you a couple of, of features uh, right off the bat. Um, but we'll get caught up to to where it would start you with quick start really quickly. Um, I've set it up so I've got three hard AI and two normal uh, for a little bit of a challenge since I've been playing for years ever since like the day the original game came out um so because of that I uh, bumped up a couple of the AI to hard I uh, do not do not explicitly do not recommend doing that for your first game even if you are uh, accustomed to RTSs the AI in this game is insanely good if you're an RTS vet try it out on normal first uh, get your feet wet, and if you're new to the genre of RTS strategy games, put it on easy, please. It is a brutal AI. It, it is like playing against the person. Um, anyway, though, I've set uh, the other TEC guy to be on my team, so I can show you a couple of features about teamwork. Um, and I've set, uh, yeah, one of each of the other race to, to hard. Uh, anyway, let's get this started. gonna load there we go all right now first thing I'm gonna do is pause it uh, very important to do because I'm gonna be talking and explaining a lot and I don't want the AI getting ahead of me um, do not feel bad or hesitate about pausing the game uh, especially for your first couple of games hit the pause button it is literally the pause button the one right next to like a uh, print screen or wherever it is on your keyboard my oh, mine's right above the uh, the number pad off on the side hit that pause button <coughs> so give yourself some some breathing room, some time to think about what you know you're gonna do, what's going on. Um, there's no shame in that. Your first couple of games, um, you can do all sorts of things like zoom in, zoom out, check the map, you know, check all sorts of stuff, see what's going on while it's paused. Uh, you can even like buy uh, ships and, and place buildings. They don't kind of show up until you unpause it, but you can you can do stuff like that. You can set research options uh, while it's paused. So. A lot of stuff you can do while it's paused. Take advantage of that to get the uh, the hang of things. Um, first off, you need to know how to control the, the camera and move stuff around. Uh, it's real simple, very very easy to do in this game. Every everything to do with the UI and controlling and movement, it's all very streamlined, very very easy to get your head around. Um, zoom in, zoom out with the mouse scroll like any other game. You can um, move the camera by uh, just panning it at the edge of the screen and if you hold down the right click button you can uh, move the camera around up down left right in every direction but the coolest feature <coughs> excuse me about the game uh, camera system is uh, its zoom to feature where wherever your cursor is is where it will zoom to which is really neat so if you want to look over here it will zoom in on that particular spot wherever your your mouse cursor is if you want to zoom in over there like that it's pretty pretty neat and um, if you zoom out a bit farther you can see this is our home planet my home planet Yasuda that's always a, a Terran planet um, it is not always Yasuda and it's certainly not always in the same spot just for this particular map it is um, and if you zoom out a little bit farther you can uh, see that we've got the star system that we're started in and um, our home planet here is connected to two others that are grayed out with exclamation points. That means they have not been explored yet or discovered. 
but the key thing to note here is the line that is being drawn in between them. Uh, this is called the phase lane. This is very important. Uh, this is how you move between one planet or the other. For example, um, my home planet can only be accessed from either this planet or that planet. So this is a very good tactical starting position because there's only two avenues and two ways to our home planet, which we can you know, easily defend that. Now, if you have like four or five phase lanes going to your home planet, it's going to be quite a bit harder to defend. Um, so this is very important uh, for the overall strategy of your game to keep in mind phase lanes, where they go, and uh, how they all connect to each other so you can set up choke points and... Um, and make like tactical kill boxes so to speak uh, and defend what I call your core worlds with a, a front line basically um, so that's kind of the overall strategy uh, that you gotta keep in the uh, back of your head as, as you're exploring these maps um, anyway if you zoom out a bit farther here yeah you see you got the star system and uh, if you zoom out a little bit farther it takes you to this view which is uh, they look like galaxies actually but they're stars so whatever um, you can see this particular map I set it up with a three star system and um, if you zoom in on this one over here you can see nothing shows up but the star itself nothing here has been explored and we need a to get a research uh, topic called uh, I forget what it's called it's like star jumps or something like what you see in here do, do, do long range jumps that's what it's called long range jumps and you need that <coughs> to enable you to jump from your home star system to this other one and explore it but uh, anyway if we zoom in on the third one over here we see the planet of my AI partner that I set to my team now because he is allied with me he's got ship vision shared and planet vision meaning I can see where all of his ships are and what they're doing and I can see all of his planets and what's going on at them so that's a cool feature. Um, again, though, I can't get to him because I don't have the long-range jumps or wormhole navigation. Anyway, if we zoom back out, we can just... It's real. I love the, the point two and zoom. You just point your freaking cursor at that star and zoom in, and it zooms to it. Really neat. Um, okay, so that's uh, how you look around the star map, how you see where everything's at, and to control the cameras. Um, next thing basic stuff I want to cover is uh, this bar right here um, the UI is very minimalistic it uh, doesn't show you a bunch of clutter and stuff that you don't need to know it's all very condensed and uh, and easy to understand the most important part of it is this bar right up here which is your resource bar and uh, your fleet supply bar you're gonna be spending a lot of time looking up there and checking that this should be <laughs> um, keeping a close eye on that bar the first number right here the one that uh, as you can see, uh, down here in this corner is where it will show up. If I if I stop hovering over, it disappears. But uh, if you look down there, you see that's capital ships. It tells you that it means we have one capital ship crew available, meaning we can uh, construct one capital ship. Um, there are research things you can get, which will increase that number as we go along. But um, that's a little bit farther down the road. I'll show you how to do that. The one next to this is your overall fleet supply, your fleet capacity. Um, it starts out with 100, and basically every ship you build will consume some out of that fleet supply. Uh, at first, our little frigates we build will take five away each time we build one. So, you know, if we build five of them, it's going to take 25 out of that and take us down to 75. Um, another thing to note is capital ships. As well as requiring a capital ship supply, they also, all of them, require 50 fleet supply. So when we build a capital ship, it's going to take this one away, and it's going to cut our 100 into f down to 50. Uh, but they're very powerful ships. Very expensive to build, but very powerful, and, um, and very good to have. Very necessary. Um, the next thing here is your credits. And when you mouse over it, it tells you in the bottom how much your total income per second is so I'm gaining 10.1 per second of credits and that is based on the planet you own uh, how many planets you own what type of planets basically their their population is what that's based on uh, Terran planets have a high population capacity um, so they get a very good credit income there are I think seven different types of planets uh, that will 
I'll show you all of them. Uh, each one has different bonuses. Um, there are ice planets, volcanic planets, desert planets, Terran planets, all sorts of different types. Um, some of them have a low population capacity, but they give you other benefits like extra tactical slots or extra logistic slots so you can build more stuff at them. Um, different types of resource asteroids <coughs> like the ice planets have a bunch of, of crystal asteroids. Uh, so I'll cover all of that here in a little bit. Um, but that's that's how you check how much credits all of the different planets you own are gaining you. Next to that is how much metal you have. Uh, I have 800 right now and I'm gaining a total income of zero because I don't have any resource uh, asteroids. Well, I have the resource asteroids here, but the uh, refinery extractors are not built on them. Now, if you're playing on the quick start, they will be built, so uh, that's going to be our first task. Uh, I'm going to get caught up on that. And the, the purple icon next to that is your crystal and your crystal income down there in the bottom. Um, so yeah, like I said, the first thing I need to do here is to build these resource extractors. Now, on, on a quick start, all three of these at your home planet will be built. However, every other planet you colonize, these will not be built at them. So I want, that's why I want to show this to you on how you do that. Uh, the very, very first thing you want to do every time you colonize a new planet is build the asteroid uh, resource extractors. Uh, to start you know, taking advantage of them, getting that crystal income, getting that metal income started. So how you do that is, um, all you do is click on the planet itself, and that will show the action bar down here. And in the action bar, you can do many different things. The green thing in here is how you develop the planet and upgrade its infrastructure. Uh, these two purple ones are for building buildings at that planet uh, in the gravity well. The, the first one is logistics. Logistics buildings like uh, factories and research buildings. The second purple button here is for tactical structures like uh, your defense platforms, your uh, defense cannons, stuff like that. And the bottom row here is for building ships. If you have the ship factories at that planet, note that uh, your home planet starts with a frigate factory. On quick start it also starts with a capital ship factory. Um, and if it's grayed out, it means you don't have the corresponding factory, like right now, because on normal start, I don't have the capital ship factory, and you won't have a Titan factory yet until you research that. But um, <coughs> so yeah, grayed out. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, grayed out stuff means you can't build it. Gold means you can, and it works that way in in here too, uh, in the logistics buildings. You notice the uh, these three are grayed out because I don't have the research prerequisites to build those particular buildings. Um, <clears throat> anyway, in the logistics spot in here, that's where you will find your metal extractors as well as your factories and stuff. So that's the first thing I'm going to build here. Is uh, I'm going to build both of those me metal and one crystal extractor. The next thing I'm going to do is place down a capital ship factory. Now you're thinking, wait a minute, you said they're really expensive and you're probably not going to be able to afford these for a little while. Well, that is true. However, the very first capital ship is completely free. It will still take your 50 fleet supply, like I said, and it'll still take your one capital ship uh, supply. But it's free in credits, it's free in metal, and it's free in crystal for the first time. So I'm definitely going to plop that down ASAP. I'm going to put it like right here. <clears throat> now, you notice when I place that, it gives you a green circle, and uh, there are some yellow lines that pop up whenever you click on that. The yellow lines here means that uh, the first one right around the planet means you can't place it any closer to the planet than that, and this outer one means you can't place it any farther away from the planet than that. But uh, you just find a place anywhere you really want to. It doesn't quite matter. On a tactical level, when it comes to to defenses, it could matter um, for like your defense structures. I mean, you don't want to place them way out here, right next to to where people will jumping in from the phase line. Uh, you want to back them up a little bit, and uh, so you have some room to place defensive structures between here and there, because your enemies are going to be jumping in over here from this phase lane, you know, and uh, and they'll be popping in here, and you don't want 
your buildings that could get blown up right there. You want to have your defenses lined up there. So you got to take that into account when you're placing your buildings. All right, so we got our capital ship factory placed. We've got our resource extractors built. The next thing I want to do is build um, some frigates. So you can either do that directly by clicking on your factory and then clicking on in the action bar down here the frigates or cruisers. Right now you can't build any cruisers until you research the prerequisite for them. You have to research the prototype thing from military research. So you can't access any of the cruisers just yet. Those are more uh, advanced ships. Uh, but you do start with the ability to build some cruisers. Or sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. You do start with the ability to build some frigates. Um, you start with these three. Uh, you got your scout frigate, your cobalt light frigate, which is your damage dealer, the backbone early game, your backbone of your fleet, and the protev colony frigate. Now, I'm not going to build quote, the protev colonies just yet. Um, they're kind of situational. Now, I'll explain that in a minute, but right now I want to get a couple of scout frigates up and going so I can tell what these planets are over here and uh, and figure out my strategy of colonization. So I'm going to queue up two of those right now, and like I said earlier, while it's paused you can still do stuff like queue up uh, vehicles, so that's really a really good thing. The other thing I'm going to do right off the bat too is even though this capital ship factory is not built up, or not finished building, you can still queue up stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and queue up my uh, capital ship that I want to build. Um, again, you can do that either by just clicking directly on it or clicking on the planet and then clicking down here on the action bar. Um, same as the uh, frigates and, and cruisers. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to go with the Akon battle cruiser. <clears throat> now, as the TEC, you do have six options here, but really, in my opinion, you only have one option. And the reason for that is what each of these capital ships specializes in doing. Each one specializes in a different thing. Um, you got your call battleship, which is your mainline battleship, your, your backbone damage dealer. And then you have more support stuff, like your carriers that are fighter bomber carriers. It's more support, um, maybe like your third or fourth capital ship, you'd want to go with something like that. Not your first one. Um, and then you have like the Dunov battle cruiser. Again, it's a support one, um, and you can tell these uh, tell that by well reading the tooltip. It says a balanced support ship, derp. But um, the other way you can tell um, what a particular capital ship is specialized in doing is by those green words there. The green words are corresponding to the abilities, the special abilities that that particular capital ship has. The Dunham Battle Cruiser has shield restore and EMP charge and, and so on and so forth. Um, whereas the Akon Battle Cruiser that I want to build has colonize. That's the reason why I want to build it. I will uh, be able to colonize planets with this thing instead of using that Protev colony ship. Now there's a lot of reasons why you want to do that. For one, this is a big beastly freaking capital ship that can hold its own in combat and be the backbone of my fleet early on. Uh, the other reason is it has a lot more antimatter. All of your activated skills like colonize take antimatter and um, the Proteb doesn't have a very big antimatter pool. Another reason is um, the fact that the speed at which the ship moves. The Akon Battlecruiser simply moves through the space quicker and gets to the, the, uh, the planets faster. So early on, highly, highly recommend go with the Akon Battle Cruiser or its Vasari and Advent um, equivalent. Each one of the factions has an equivalent ship that can colonize stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and queue that up, and as soon as the, um, the capital ship factory is finished building, it will go ahead and start constructing it. Now, of course, that was free. Didn't take any of my Meddler Crystal, which is awesome. So... What I am going to do, though, is now that I still have 46 fleet supply left, I'm going to go ahead and queue up a couple of the Cobalt Light Frigates to be uh, the ancillary ships that I build a, my fleet around the capital ship with. Um, now, I have enough fleet supply to construct eight of these, so you're going to want to build eight of them. Don't quite, ha don't quite have enough credits to do that. However, 
um, there is a way around that and that's another feature I want to show you right now you might have noticed up here in the top right there's this box um, with a bunch of numbers there and you probably have no idea what the heck that means but I'm going to show you right now uh, it's a quick way I can get some more credits this is what they call the black market it shows you uh, the top one is metal and the bottom one is crystal now the red one uh, the red numbers are buy so you can buy metal at a cost of 478 per 100 or you can sell it the green numbers are for selling so if I have excess metal that I don't particularly need at this very moment I can sell it for 239 credits per 100 so I'm gonna do just that I'm gonna sell a hundred of my crystal and a hundred of my metal and that'll give me enough credits to build two more cobalts so I can have five of them queued up at this very second which is awesome um, I need eight of them so I'll just have to queue those as I gain more resources because I don't want to sell all of my metal or all of my crystal because well, I need some of that as well as costing 300 credits it also costs 500 metal uh, for these light frigates okay now what else did I want to cover um, I'm going to unpause it something else I totally forgot about mentioning is um, if you're playing diplomacy or trinity versions of the game the only way to access the escape menu <laughs> which you would think would be escape it's not it's F10 or clicking this button up here uh, menu game menu you can rebind that from F10 to something else uh, it was very confusing when I very first got the game all those years ago. I could not figure out how the hell to pull up the menu. It took me quite a while to realize uh, what the hotkey for it was because it, um, I didn't see that menu button up top and I was just pushing all these buttons like, why the hell is that escape not working? So I finally hit F10 randomly hitting buttons and I went, oh, pss, derp. That's a stupid way of doing it. So <laughs> if you're playing Trinity, um, that's how you pull up the game menu. For Rebellion, they did change that and added in the functionality of hitting Escape. Um, the first thing I would recommend doing, unlike what I, what I said earlier, was pause the game. Actually, I would go into the Escape menu and save it. Save it and uh, call it whatever the hell you want, but I call it, I always call it Start. Whatever I'm going to name the map saves, and but put Start at the end of it. Um, so that way, if you make a mistake early on, um, you weren't paying enough attention, something bad happens, and you have to start over, but you like the map itself. If you like the configuration of where you start, where the uh, planets are and all of that, and you want to keep that, but just start over, then having this initial start file, uh, save file, is very, very handy. So as you can see, I always have a start file every time I start a, a map. Um, but what I'm going to do right now is save this as tutorial 1. Okay. So I think, I think I'm caught up right now to where you would be on a quick start. I've got all my resource asteroids, I've got my capital ship, and I've built two scout frigates. That's where you would be, that's where you initially start on quick start. Um, so the first things you want to do, queue up that Akon battle cruiser and get eight Cobalt Light Frigates up and going. I'll and the next thing is take your... Well, the first thing you want to do aside from building stuff is take your Scout Frigates and send them out. And the way we can do that is there's a lot of different ways to select it. You can either just hover over it and left click or you can do the standard like Windows thing and just left click to drag a box around it and highlight any ships in that box. Alternatively, there's this thing off on the side that's called the Empire Tree. Um, on the Empire Tree, you can see uh, it lists all your buildings and all your ships. So you can click on the ship through there as well. Pretty nifty little thing. And you will see that once it is selected, there is a like white box around it in the game screen, as well as a square, a white square around it in the Empire Tree. Um, so I'm going to select it, and I'm going to set a hot group to this thing so that way I can find it back just by pushing uh, either 1 through 10. Um, I have a system where 
one through three are my main battle fleets. Uh, five is like my bomber group, um, and my scouts are seven through nine. That's my own personal system, but I would recommend getting a system of your own. It makes things much easier, um, especially with uh, loading up an old save file. Uh, you know exactly what button to push to find your scouts, what button to push to find your main fleet, and uh, it can be very, very, very helpful. Uh, so I'm going to set this guy to be number seven by holding control and then pushing seven. And now, if I unselect him, uh, all I have to do is hit seven, and it will highlight him and select him. Also, uh, if you're not sure where the heck he is and you're looking somewhere else, just hit seven or whatever number you set it to. Hit it twice, and it will zoom the camera back to him. Very, very handy. So, now that I have him set to Hot Group 7, I'm going to uh, right-click this undiscovered I'm planet, already there. and you will see the uh, green line light up. That means he is headed to th where that green line ends. Uh, actually, that's blue, isn't it? Anyway, he's heading up there to explore that. And, it's out um, there. Here's my second oh, one. Fun. I'm going to hold Control and click 8. And he will be set to hot group 8. And I will have him go to this other planet and see what it is. So that's really the very, very first thing you want to do in any game, is you want to send uh, assign hotkeys to your scouts and send them off in opposite directions to whatever planets are connected to your home planet with phase lanes. And if you got more than two planets connected to, to your um, home world here, you might want to build a couple of extra scouts. Um, but definitely get your uh, your capital ship queued up, your con battle cruiser or whatever variation. If you're playing the other races, uh, whatever their capital ship that has the colonize ability, get that queued up and ready uh, to go, and get yourself eight of these light frigates ready. Sell some more metal. There's six. Okay. So by and I'll just wait on the credits. All right. So um, one last thing I want to leave you with is um, the rest of the UI that I haven't covered thus far. Uh, just briefly mention them. I will go into much more detail uh, later on. Um, if you're noticing that you're having to wait a while. Now, for your very first game, I would probably not recommend doing this at all, if if at all. Very limited, um, because you're trying to wrap your head around and explore the UI and trying to find stuff. Uh, but if you do notice that you're having to wait a while for resources to gain or uh, an action to be performed, you can speed up the game time. I think I mentioned that in episode zero. Uh, you can speed up the game time with these buttons down here that increase game speed or a decrease game speed. Uh, they're default mapped to uh, the equal sign and the minus sign right next to a backspace on your keyboard. Or you can just click these plus and minus buttons down here. It is very uh, very handy to use in some occasions where you just need that little bit more metal and then you can queue up your ship or, or whatever uh, you might be doing that you just need a little bit of time to pass and you, you're tired of waiting. Just click that. Um, another thing I wanted to show you real quick before I go is uh, this, these four things up at the top are pretty important. I'm going to cover each one in detail. I'm probably devote a whole episode to them. Um, this button right here pulls up your diplomacy window, where you can see your standing of um, you know, military, economy, diplomacy. Uh, it basically compares how well you're doing against the other players. Uh, but more importantly in here, that's not really worth what you'd be looking at, is your faction standing with all of the other uh, players in the game. You can see my faction standing with this guy is at 10. Um, that is halfway. It can go into negatives. You can get like anywhere from negative 20 to positive 20. Uh, 10 means they really like you. Positive 20 means they absolutely love you. That's the maximum. Uh, 0 means they're pretty ambivalent. And if it's negatives, that means they really hate you. <laughs> um, so, like this guy here, purple, he really hates me. Negative 9.95, basically negative 10. 
uh, yeah, pink is negative three, uh, three, negative two, negative one. They don't hate me quite as much as purple guy, but yeah, none of them really like me all that much aside from my ally. So that's how you tell your faction standing with other people, and uh, I'll go cover this in much more detail. This button here show, just show, uh, gives you a more condensed overview of what other people think of you. Um, but it's mostly used to see what other people think of someone else. So I can see that if I click my ally, I can see what the other people think of him. So, yeah, purple guy really hates my ally as well. Purple guy's got um, negative 13 on my ally. Uh, anyway, though, that's that. Um, this window in here is your research. The beaker is your research window. I'll devote like a whole episode to that. It's exceedingly important. And uh, this one's the criminal underground, which just gives you a bigger view of the uh, buy and sell crystal that's already on the overlay up there. Um, the other thing, the big thing really in, in this window is actually the pirates tab. And again, I'll devote like a whole episode to that. It's very, very important. Come later in the game. But um, suffice it to say, this is where you place bounties on the other players that the uh, pirates will then go and attack them. Uh, but they only do that every 15, 14 minutes, something like that. 15 minutes, I think. So we have pretty much 14 minutes until we have to worry about that. So anyway, that uh, pretty much concludes this episode on uh, what to do right off the bat. Quick recap. Get your scouts headed out to all of the undiscovered planets that you have connecting to your home planet through these phase lanes. Queue up your colonizing battle cruiser, uh, capital ship, and queue up eight of the light frigates and that will pretty much use up all of your fleet supply and get you set up in a very good position to uh, to pounce <laughs> and get you some planets which is what we're going to cover in the next episode so if you did enjoy and hopefully you found it informative I, I do hope so and you're watching on my YouTube channel, clicking that thumbs up down there is, as always, much appreciated. And if you want to see more from me, then please subscribe. And follow me at uh, twitch.tv. My account there is Sugames, T-Z-U-G-A-M-E-S. Until next time, though, Sukas is signing off. I hope you have a good one.